Good morning. Happy Labor Day, guys. <clears throat> so, I am preparing um, our Labor Day dinner. Uh, somebody might be already finished. It is about 9.30 in the morning. I have a lot of things to do today. So, I am going to do our dinner without the stove and without the barbecue. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it and bear with me. So again, I'm doing this off my laptop. I hope you can hear me. Um, I am the only one up, so I don't want to scream. So in this, in my slow cooker, I have some, um, my red beans and I have some water and I have some bacon. So what I'm going to do is it's on high. I'm going to cook my beans up in there. Uh, these are the kidney beans, at matter of fact. So I'm going to add my salt and my pepper, whatever seasoning I want in there. So what I have right here is, have a little pepper. And of course, I don't, oh, I try not to over season anything. If any extra season is needed, you will have to add it yourself. Pink Himalaya salt. A little thyme. One of my favorites. Yes, my first basil. Basil in my beans. And this will last me close, well, after I do my last harvest of basil before the temperature drop. It will last me the rest of the year until it's time to grow basil again, unless I decide to bring it inside, and that always works. Then, I can some diced tomatoes. So, I already have my onion and bell pepper uh, up in here, so I don't have to go and start cutting. Now, I do have some pre-chopped, but because I do like tomato sauce in my uh, red beans, all I have to do is me do it pop the top you heard that seal break put it up in here I use the whole this is a paint size drawer And the bacon already have salt in it, so again, you don't have to add. I mean, you really season it to your taste. I put like that. I'm not gonna say you don't have to add anything, and then you just put the top up. Kidney beans don't take a long time, but I do have pinto beans. I'd like to wait and save that for later, a little closer in the um winter. Uh, sometime I mix both beans um, when I'm making my homemade chili. So, this is starting to cook. It is on high. By the time dinner is it's time for dinner, they will be ready. Okay? That's one thing. So, we're going to move over here. And I'm going to try to move you without you falling because. <laughs> I had to take the cover off my laptop, yeah, my tablet, and put you over in a different kind of container. So right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a clear view first, and then we're going to sit you back down. So, forgive my hands that's in the way right now. So what we have here.
we have one slab of ribs and um, two brisket skirts. Nothing expensive, nothing that's enough meat for me and my husband. So what I've done was I've already started pre-seasoning. Uh, I have um, I've already put my thyme, some cayenne pepper, paprika. Um, I actually like the flavoring of this steakhouse seasoning. It's not steak, but it, uh, it you won't taste it like that. Um, some salt and a little rib rub. So, oh, as well as some brown sugar. Yep, little lady put brown sugar on hers. Now. Here we go with the soy sauce. And you have to be careful because soy sauce really have a little seasoning in it. Kind of like a salty flavor. I don't know about you, but I taste it. And maybe I taste it because I'm not heavy on seasoning. A little Worcestershire sauce. And if you've seen me uh, season before, you know I'm not really heavy on, <laughs> on the seasoning. Then, what you do, I'm going to rub this in on this side then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put the same seasoning on, on the other side have you ever had seasoning or meat and only one side was seasoned and you can taste it you wouldn't think so you think that it cooked all the way through but it really didn't and then some of the, the juices from the seasoning has fallen at the bottom and today, in this here, I'm going to use my roasting pan because, again, I'm not cooking outside. Um, although, it's only in the 90s and I probably was out there with the girls and it was 100. I just don't feel the need to go out there in the heat uh, today. I do have a few things to do out there. Not big with the uh, gardening, but I do have a few seeds I want to drop. But, um... School is tomorrow, so I don't want to ex over exhaust myself like that. So I decided to do everything in the house today. So I got up early to get my food started because I knew I was going to slow cook it. Excuse me. And that's where I can kind of do some other chores and not have uh, dinner rushed. Now this uh, will probably last me and my husband two and a half days, maybe. Uh, yeah, you don't have, if when you add multiple seasoning, you don't have to put um, a whole lot of, of any of it on there because you already have a multiple uh, amount, a different amount going. Brown sugar. <clears throat> then course the soy sauce and a little bit of salt so you rub that in on this side so now you have both sides seasoned and you only use the an equal amount on both sides and a little you don't have to use a lot because again you're doing both sides and it will cook through if it don't cook through it's not cooked so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch of course some of my basil yes I put basil on everything I grew it I'm gonna eat it Okay. 
So now that that is seasoned, I have one last thing. I'm gonna put a little olive oil, canola olive oil. Not much. And it's not necessary, this is just how I'm doing mine. If it come out, try not to post so much. It will make its own gravy. Then you just take the lid. I forgot. Oh, I've been using it so much. Okay. Whew. A little apple cider vinegar. Now, if you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can use... Um, Lemon juice or lime juice if you want to. Or you can just use some um, vinegar. So I'm going to put my seasoning. I'm going to actually go ahead and get this started. And because I hate sometimes using this because it doesn't have a long cord. And if I need to... Um, so I have to take, I know I'm going to use this processor. Shoot. Like I plug the process up. I'm going to use this processor in a minute. So I need to move this out the way. Be right back. Okay, guys. We have all the seasoning put away. And we actually have our oven roaster on 450. I will turn it down probably in about 30 minutes <coughs> to let it sort um, so it can just uh, slow cook kind of the rest of the day. Um, it is easy to do whenever you have a lot of things that you have to do. And I'm going to move you so I hope you don't fall. When you have a lot of things that you have to do and you... Um, you're, you're in, you have enough time to do it technically. Well, I'm not going to sit you right there. I guess I'll sit you back right here. Sometimes you have to improvise, and I had to learn that because I did not believe in slow cooking anything. I was like, nope, everything I cook, I'm going to cook like this, 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 and it was going to be on the stove. Well, you learn quick. Well, I didn't learn quick. I can tell you that. But um, eventually, I start uh, thinking about it and it start making sense for me to um, in order for me to have a little time for myself that I have to figure different ways to um, to multitask without being uh, tired pretty much trying to get everything done so not until I moved up here so it's been at least 12 years that I kind of and it had probably hadn't been a full 12 years, maybe 10-ish of them. I kind of started fumbling with like a rice cooker. Oh my gosh, doing that was just so lazy to me. <laughs> but now I understand that sometimes you have to uh, do things to um, not necessarily help you out. It do help you out, but so you can do more things at once to get a lot done a little you know in a short amount of time because sometimes um excuse me sometime working where's my towel hold on Okay, so sometime working and trying to um, provide a, a decent meal for your family don't pay off. So you have to figure out how can you do both in the same amount of time. And as women or people that cook, I would say that not just women. That's that's kind of almost like an ultimate goal. 
you know, I need to provide dinner or breakfast or lunch. How can I do that and still work? For those of you that work like I do, you um you try to figure it out. So my world of rice cooking, which I eventually end up liking. My world of using a crock pot. Oh my gosh, that was just so just just lazy of some people. And I felt like it just did not give you the seasoning. But, again, you know, you learn as you get older. And, again, at the time, I think I was in my 30s. So, I did learn that it wasn't about being lazy. It was, it was just about learning how to multitask uh, and using the resources you have. Now, mind you, I still prefer... Just straight cooking over slow cooking. I mean, I've learned to create um, a lot of meals in my slow cooker um, and have it at a decent seasoning to where you can eat it and even add a little bit more seasoning if you need to. It's just not a preferred option all the time. Now, at this point, I don't think my life is just going to slow down for its responsibilities. You would think that, you know, when you become an empty nester, but you always end up with something else to do. And because you're so used to your life or your environment being so full, you find other things to do. Then you still have to kind of multitask. So, I'll be back in a few minutes. So, guys, we have our meat started. We have our beans started. I did slice up a bag of uh, potatoes. And uh, season them and cut them up. That is something I did put in the oven, but it's not at the top. I don't have to watch it every two seconds. So, I got my counters and stuff cleaned off, wiped off. Um, soon I will be starting to cut up my peaches, to let the rest of my peaches. Because I will be attempting, no, I will be doing some more peach jelly. Um, and I'm doing it because I don't want it to go bad. So, um... And I haven't decided I'm either going to do the peach jelly or I'm going to probably do some peach preserves so I can have it for for Thanksgiving for my attempt. Because I've never did it before. My attempt of some peach cobbler. So, um, but what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go out. Um, I'm going to take you out with me to the garden. And I'm, I'm going to harvest some of my greens um, because I, everything that I'm cooking um that's the only thing I don't have is some, something green. And I'm, I'm one of the firm believers, you know, you just got to have that color into your food. So I want um, some green. So I'm going to go and cut um, what I can cut. And it's just me and my husband. So it will be probably just enough for us to have a small uh, side of greens to go with our food. Um, yeah. So I'm going to take you along with me on that. And you see what um, I get to harvest. And also, I guess a quick look at what's going on in the garden. So, I'll be right back, and we'll be outside. So, guys, now that we're outside, <clears throat> I do not have my uh, tablet in its case. So, I am holding this tablet with um, and my basket and my shears, slippers. So, we're going to come out here and see... Um, what I'm going to pick. I'm going to try to my best to show you as I'm doing it. So, let's see. I got to find a place to put it. And I didn't water anything. So, today I'm going to come out. Even though it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to water. I may throw a few little drops on it. But just because I know I put those seedlings out. So, I'm going to turn the camera around. So, you can see. Me harvest some of these greens okay so the first little snip they got my basket right there guys so I know I got to get this knitting up because you know if I feel like something is crawling on me I'm I'm probably gonna have a fit <laughs> and y'all know how this black knitting is so we're gonna go ahead and take this one
I'm going to have to wash this one really, really good. Make sure all that is out. I'm not eating no chicken poop. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take you to, since you're on the ground, on the floor. Somebody might say, oh my gosh. Well, it'll be okay. It's not going to be... Like I said, it's going to take more than this to, <laughs> to make the greens anyway. So, let's see. I'm going to leave these here because they're still pretty young. There's no need for me to mess with them. We're going to come over here to these babies. And we're going to go ahead. I hate, you know what, I really should have watered. So, now I'm going to have to really rinse this off really good. And I hope you can see me. And if you never, I know some people let theirs go ahead and go fully, 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 and then they just cut it at the bottom and harvest the whole thing. But I like mine to, um, I, I like to do the cut and come again because I don't have, that means I don't have to um, focus on trying to session plan a lot. I mean, I've never had an issue this way, so I'm probably going to continue doing it. It'll be some that over time you'll see that um, these are little, but I'm going to go ahead and snip some. And, and this also um, promotes growth as well. Like I said, this is going to be a really small pot of greens. And... You just got to make sure you don't cut it all the way. Um, I do have other greens uh, cooking. I'm saying cooking. Growing up in there. And since I am walking out, I'm hoping I'm not covering <laughs> covering this thing up. So, this is not a lot, of course. But we'll go ahead on and it's just a little baby. We'll take a couple of slices of the mustard tender one thing i like about the mustard tender it grows fast it grows back fast so i remember cutting it all the way down at one point and this thing shot up so fast like within a week i was able to harvest again and yes i do know these are baby leaves it'll be okay and for those that's um that's new to to growing greens it'll be okay so that don't look like a lot and it's not a lot it's not a super lot but I can't tell you it's just enough for me and my husband I mean when I say just enough just enough we're gonna probably fight over this <laughs> but um yeah so I'm gonna wash these off really good just double checking I want, I think I'm going to cut a few of these collard leaves. And you want to make sure you always leave the one in the middle. Definitely. You want to, you don't want to take them all off. And when you do it like this, now this is my opinion. When you do it like this, and I think it helps prevent, um, a lot of disease or a chance of anything um, technically attacking your stuff because the longer it sits because you want it to be you want it to be you want it to be super big I just feel like you give give anything a chance to say hey I want some too now that's been my experience because I've noticed certain things that I left on longer ended up um, getting chewed on by those little cabbage worms and or whatever those little worms call when I first uh, started gardening. So I made a conscious decision that 
if it's at a at, at an edible state, that I'm gonna start uh pulling it off a little earlier. I mean, of course, everybody wants that big, that big, big, big thing of um greens or whatever. But if your situation is not um allowing that, then you just have to go ahead on and and improvise and say, hey, you know what? Let me pull this off before something else get it. Um, this is something you'll see me do a lot during the um, this season. I will be doing a, a lot of harvesting on the greens. Um, I'm checking to see if I have some peppers, if those are how they growing because they no well, they're not ready so yeah this is not a super big harvest guys <clears throat> but it's enough to fill my little basket up I know I have to uh <laughs> wash them really really good or I might grow some greens in my in myself um I will come out later um and drop a few of my uh herb seed new herb seeds but chica lele coming to get her stuff today i told her come on y'all out and about come get it so okay we're back inside you guys had a chance to see me um harvest my greens I hadn't even ate breakfast yet, and I haven't started dinner. So right now what I'm doing is I'm starting, I'm about to soak my greens, uh, get them cleaned up. And I could tell you right now, I'm probably going to use my really, really small pot uh, because it's not going to be a lot uh, to like make a big pot. But I just, I was ready for some greens. I'm not going to lie. And I knew that they would be ready, some of them would be ready to harvest. So um you got a chance to see me do that you also have a chance to follow the regrowth of them um which is always a good thing so um uh, yeah but i will make sure that um and i do have like i still have a few tomatoes and i'm gonna save that for later today and i'm getting ready to um get them together for a good salad the salad in the bowl is still doing fine i think i've cut i almost flooded my kitchen i think i um harvest from the salad in the bowl about four times maybe um so i might uh do a restart of them uh, pretty soon so that can go ahead and start um, being ready so I don't have to be without a salad, you know, by choice. Because not only do I use my lettuce for sa uh, salads, but I use it for like my nachos, taco salads, tacos, you know, um, and sandwiches. So, like I said, it do come in handy when you have that salad in the bowl. Now, I have um, the Paris Island salad, not salad, lettuce. <laughs> That I haven't planted yet because it is cool, and I really was I really didn't want to um, have to start it in the house. So as everything starts flourishing, I will find a spot to grow maybe like two or three of those because I do like to eat them when I'm eating 
my tacos, my uh, whatever, because I use that sometimes in substitution of bread. So I've always said I wanted to grow that. I do know I like it because I've eaten it before. Um, yeah, and then hopefully by the time, you know, other things get to bloom in that tiny Tim <laughs> tomato, uh, those tomatoes start to bloom too. I'm hoping everything take um, outside and inside because um, that's where I have a good supply. And also, you know, I can actually use them uh, to do some candy, my diced tomatoes or some crushed tomatoes or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I don't use a lot of big tomatoes. But now that I'm canny, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to be, like, growing a tomato forest. But I will be trying, you know, a few varieties more often just to kind of see if I like them. Um, and because of my space, I will be um, adding, like, some trellises for future projects uh, for stuff like that because these the, the tomatoes I got now the new ones are not uh, determinate and the, my cherry tomatoes were determined as well as the tiny tim so the new tomatoes the bigger tomatoes are not determined and they're going to vine so I want to make sure that I have the um right support for them as well as you know in the future my cucumbers or my beans so I have a couple of ideas that I'm going to do to where it would not crowd my space and again, like I said, it's down the line. Um, hopefully, I can have all cert most of these projects that I want to do done before it gets too hot. Um, but when you play, uh, when you do put the rain in, in factor, the cold that's coming up, you know, you have to kind of be mindful still what you're going to uh, do. Now, as much as I hate the heat, I'm not a big fan of the cold now. And it, it I'm a Texas girl, so we're not used to all that sn snow and below this and below. I'm not. But, um, yeah, so we'll figure it out, and, and I will uh, let you know how things go in a minute. Okay, guys, so I know you can barely see the pot, so I'm going to lift it up. This little pot here is what I'm going to cook all of the greens in. I have my seasoning already in here, some salt and pepper, of course, some bacon, um, what I do like to do, just to have it a little, little edgy flavor, I'm not a big uh, spicy person eater, but I'm going to just take some nacho, some jalapeno juice, pour a little of that in there, because it's only a small pot, so I don't have to pour a lot. I have my banana peppers from the garden. I'm going to go ahead and let's start cooking in there as well. And I've, um, hope you don't tilt. I've already, um, let me see if I can show you. I've washed my greens once with the stems on. <laughs> I know I got you on my dishes. Huh, that's not good. So... How about that? So, I'm, I didn't destem them like I like them. And I'm washing them again. And then I will put them over here in the strainer. So I can um, rinse them once again before I actually start cooking them. Because you know that I told you that we've had, um, I had just fed them. And I don't want to be eating uh, <laughs> plant food. So I want to make sure that I have no grit. Have you ever ate someone greens and it was gritty? Whether it was from the store or not. I'm not talking about the ones from the bag. So, 
I don't know about you. Some things you don't have to get scrubbed down with them. But um, I don't want no gritty greens. So you have to make sure you clean them really good. Even though they're, you have to, uh, you get fresh greens from the store. It's always wise to uh, clean them afterwards. Hope you guys are enjoying this here from the garden to the table video. Pretty much, I guess you could say a little everything you've been spending the day with me. So it may be a little long video. I'm, I'm gonna try to make it short. Make make two parts. If you're seeing this here at <laughs> on the second part, then you know. So this is um I haven't did from the garden to the table in a while. So this is one of those. So what I have from the garden to the table in this meal would be my greens and my um my banana peppers. It would have been potatoes, but I didn't do another harvest, I mean another uh round of some uh, potatoes. So yeah. My water starting to boil. So I'm gonna show you just how that looks. Uh, for those that have cooked greens before, you know, once you put them in the water, uh, within a minute or two, they start cooking down. So that's how I know that this here is just going to be enough for us to eat today. Tomorrow will be a different day on what we're going to eat green. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hope everybody's just enjoying this Memorial Day holiday. Um, I know a lot of people have chosen to barbecue. I've done that <laughs> in the heat. And as much as I love barbecue, I don't do it, um, I don't make it a point to do it for every holiday because it's just too much at times. So, I'm just bringing you over here. Let me see if I turn this light on. It's probably not going to help. So, yeah. I said I wasn't going to do anything on the stove, but these greens, it won't take long for them. So, I'm going to do them on the stove because I really wanted them. And this, remember, this is a mix. This is greens. This is collard greens, mustard greens, and some mustard tenders, and some turnip greens. So it's kind of, only thing I don't have in here is my kale. Oh, man, I wish I had some kale ready. I love cooking all my greens. I even put my Swiss chard in here, and that cooks up really good. And for those that have never cooked your leaves from your broccoli or your kale, wonderful you may want to try it if you have it and if you've never did it before i wouldn't tell you if you've never well if you never did it before i wouldn't tell you to do it just by itself you know um because you don't want to waste a good set of greens but hold on i would tell you to um just mix it with like your collards or or your, even your kale and collards or your mustards, you know, to kind of get your, yourself used to it. Now, some people have cooked them probably by themselves. Um, I, I can't tell you that I have cooked them by themselves as greens. I haven't. But I do know, I, well, I heard of people that have done that. So... I'm going to show you how this um, pot looks. Let me see if I can turn it around. Mm. So this is the, my small pot with the greens that I've um, harvested and that'll be for me and my husband. So yeah, it don't take much. This is what I got my stuff propped up with. and. I'm going to show, guys, this is my, the camera I'm always fussing about. This is my little camera, and that's the brand, and I like it, but I'm having so much issues with the volume, and it's not that anything is wrong with the camera itself, um, you just need a mic. And I don't have a portable mic. I do have a, a Bluetooth um, 
earpiece, but I haven't figured out exactly yet um, how to hook that up to the, I mean, it do have a port that I can hook it up, but I will have to have a, the end, the cord to do that with. So, yeah. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to end this video right here. I hope you enjoyed um, it so far. And maybe later when everything is done, I'll give you a quick look at how everything turned out. Um, this is my garden to the table. I appreciate you watching. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Hit the like button, share. Leave a comment. Give me your opinion on how you think everything is going to look, is going to taste, and how do you think my combination is. If that makes sense, I don't know. But yeah, hit the notification bell so you can always know when I put up a video. Have a great day. Okay, guys, so the beans have been cooking. And we're going to see uh, where they're at. And then, so, I come and I just give them a little stir. And you know, sometimes I put beans in, not beans, <laughs> sometimes I put a uh, round turkey in it or um, sausages or, or ground meat. And now, uh, but I didn't do it today. Now I'm gonna show you, this is the meat and that's without sauce. And I can tell you right now, it is so tender. And this is just in my uh, oven roaster. So at, I, I can tell you right now, the meat is ready. So I've actually turned it down as well as the greens. Let me show you. Remember I said I was doing a small pot. So here's the greens. Uh-oh, just gonna roll on off the uh, little burner. That's enough just for me and my husband for today. And look, I'm gonna actually do a taste test. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, oh. Um, I did turn that oven on. I do have some potato halves in there. I did peel them this time. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, this Garden to the Table video. If you did like this Garden to the Table video, please like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. As well as click on that bell so you can always know when Love Lady is putting up a new video. Have a great day. Okay, guys, this is the finished product of that garden to the table there's the greens i got the garden the potatoes that did not come out the garden or the beans and i have my ribs and my brisket skirt so it's time to go to uh eat time have a good day please like subscribe and share the video click on the notification bell if you haven't so you can always uh, be notified when I put up a video. Thank you guys.